So Tom Hunt, when I was doing my research, I, it seems like you had quite a comfortable start in life. Is that fair to say? I think in many respects I, I did. Um, I, was, um, I went to a good school. I, I had two parents who cared about me, loved me, and they're still with me. Um, and I had some grandparents that also, I think, had a pretty positive influence on me. Um, but I think in other respects, I, um, I don't think things were easy for me. I mean, I had um, quite significant learning disabilities at school. Um, when I was 12, I had a reading and writing age for an eight-year-old. Uh, and, um, you know, schoolwork never came easy to me. I mean, I don't think I could do my shoelaces until I was about 14. I couldn't do my tie until I left university. So, um, Really? My goodness. Let's take all of those in yeah. turn because th this yeah. is so interesting. So you were diagnosed at 12 yeah. with... Dyslexia yeah, and dyspraxia. dyspraxia. Yeah. We all know what dyslexia is. Tell mm. us about dyspraxia. Uh, dyspraxia is basically immaturities in movement and it's, it's, it's being very bad at process uh, and very bad at knowing steps and sequences. So it can, which is probably one of the reasons why I wasn't very good at maths and one of the reasons why I couldn't do my shoelaces until I was 14, one of the reasons why I couldn't do a tie until I was at university. Um, and it's, it, it does also impact your organisation, impacts your ability to, to plan things to, and, and it just means that you process things in a very different way. But you can't really process these facts when you're when you're go, when you're at school because how do you process it? You just yeah. want to be like every other kid, right? Well, I mean, when, when I was when I was um, uh, sort of 12 or before I was 12, when I was 11, when I was 10, not 8, 9, I, I, I was very interested in sport. That was mainly what I wanted to do. I wanted to I wanted to I wanted to play football. Um, I was into my gay karting. Um, I wasn't interested in the schoolwork. Um, and my teachers had said to me that I was a long way behind and I never really took it very seriously. And I just sort of thought, oh, it'd be okay, it'll be okay, it'll be okay. But then it was when I was, I think it was when I was 12 and I, they had a very much more serious conversation with me. And they said that unless I made serious improvements, then they'd have to take me out of the school because I was that far behind. Um, but you know, I was just used to being that person in the class, eyes glazed over not understanding why I couldn't process information in the same way as everybody else. Knowing deep down that I wasn't thick, but most of the time being made to feel like I was. Um, and I'm not gonna blame anybody for that because I don't think there was a huge amount of understanding at the time of things like dyslexia and dyspraxia. Um, but when I got diagnosed with dyslexia and dyspraxia, which I was quite lucky to be diagnosed at 12, I did get some very powerful interventions made by specialists who and they took me out of French, immediately they took me out of French. The school had the flexibility to make that decision and they gave me the one-to-one -one personalized support that I needed so that I, over time, um, overcame those disabilities and did pretty well in my GCSEs, did quite well in my A-levels and then I ended up doing history and politics at Manchester and then doing a master's at Oxford in um, Russian history. So one way or another, <laughs> from being you know 12 and having a read around age of an eight-year-old, I through first class support, I developed techniques and ways of learning that meant that I, when I was a 22 year old, could look back at it and think I've been academically successful, which for me you know, was never a likelihood. But I would say that I was incredibly, incredibly fortunate to be in a position where I had the support that I, I had. It was an, I, was at, I was at an independent school and half the reason why my dad wanted to, fought to keep me there was because he, he felt I needed that additional support. So my fear is that, and for me it was touch and go, I mean, I could have not got anywhere near to where I ended up going to academically, but my fear is that perhaps I was looking at young people with the kind of disabilities that I had, maybe I was one in 10 who was able to get through it. So my passion is to try and make sure, sure that all Toms with those disabilities, regardless of their family circumstances, are given the educational opportunities and, and support that they need to achieve their full potential. And it really shouldn't matter whether their parents happen to be in a position where they can afford uh, to provide the kind of support that I got. So for me, that's probably the number one burning passion that I've got. 